So if you've seen any of my previous videos, you would know that I use NeoVim as my main text editor for basically everything except programming. NeoVim is basically just a better version of Vim. So what we're going to do today is take a look at my VimRC and make some comments about some of the things that I've decided to do in it. But if you are new around here, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm trying to hit 100 subs by the end of the year and we're getting closer and closer every single day. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we'll switch over to my desktop now and bring up my terminal which I put onto the wrong screen. Okay, now you guys should be able to see it. So with my current VimRC, it's not actually going to work in standard Vim. I just tried it before I started recording the video and because of some of the settings that I've got in it now, it's just going to break a little bit. So I will show you what it looks like because it is a little bit amusing. So because of one of the plugins I've got, we've got this bar down here, that's fine. But I think because of the theme that I've got attached to it, I've got this really weird line here for some reason. I don't particularly know why. And it just follows my cursor along. Either way, doesn't really matter. I don't actually ever use just regular Vim. I always use NeoVim. If you've noticed in my videos when I go into my configs, I just write V. I've just got that bound to NVim. So if you don't have Vim or NVim installed, then you can easily install it just with your package manager. So they are probably available in every single distro under the sun. So on Arch Linux, that is just sudo pacman. And then if you want to install NVim, for example, you just write NVim and then that, I think it might be NeoVim actually. Yeah, it's NeoVim, sorry. And you can install it like that, but the command you run for NeoVim is NVim. So we run that and this is what my install of NeoVim looks like. So if we put the webcam up there, so we've got this bar along the bottom that'll show which mode I'm in, as well as a couple other nice things. I'll bring up a longer file that you can actually see I guess we can use the VimRC for this. So it'll show the number of lines and a couple of other things. I think that, yeah, that's, that line here is the percentage that I am through the document and this will just say what sort of encoding the file is in. And this, I believe, is the file type. So for NVim, normally you would have to go into your .config file. So if we bring up LF, so into my config folder and in NVim and then it's init.vim for NeoVim, but for regular Vim, it's just your VimRC. I've got them sim linked to the same file, so it doesn't really matter which one I open up. So in here, we've got, a, I th what is it? 184 lines of settings. I'm gonna rush through some of the later stuff because a lot of the later stuff is just Vim macros that I'm not really gonna explain every single one line by line because that's kind of a waste of time. So we've got my plugin manager up first. So I haven't got many plugins for Vim. I'm not a massive programmer in Vim. I use it for a little bit, like when I'm trying to say modify ST, I'll use it. So we've got Vim Airline, which is what this bar is down here. On regular Vim, you actually can get it to display uh, power line thingies, power line glyphs but it doesn't work in NeoVim for some reason. Not exactly sure why, it's a little annoying because it does look much better with the power line glyphs. So then we've got the theme that I've got down here that'll just install a bunch of different themes. NVim Colorizer is a really cool plugin that I ran into a little while ago. So if we bring up another one, I'll just go into a file I know has some colors in it. So let's see my ST config. So if we go down to ST, not what ST, what am I doing? Go down to color find my color theme. So what Vim Colorizer does is basically it will just whenever you put colors in a file, it will actually show you what those colors are. And I think that's actually really cool. It's not useful really because I will always check my colors in a browser because it's just much easier than cycling through hex numbers. But it is nice at a glance to be like, okay, what does that hex value there mean? And then the next plugin that we've got in here is Goyo. So basically what Goyo will do, I can just show you it because that's the pretty much the easiest way to explain it. It will pretty much just remove all of the distractions from your, your Vim window. So it removes your number lines, your power line bar, anything that will get in the way. So you can just focus on writing. And this is nice when you just want to do some writing and not really worry about anything. So syntax highlighting, basically what that will do is what it says it does, it will turn on the syntax highlighting. So we've got the encoding of my files. I've got that just set to UTF-8 because that's just what you use on Linux most of the time. Expand tabs, I can't exactly remember what that one did or what shift 
uh, width or soft tab stop was the one of my tab sizes and same with tab stop. I can't exactly remember the differences between them because I set them months ago and I'm just, I don't bother dealing with them after that. So if you want to know exactly what those do, go look them up. But all I remember is that it sets my tab spaces to four. I don't remember exactly what each individual one does though. So if you notice when I'm scrolling, I have my oh, my current line being on where my cursor is and then the numbers above and below it are the number of lines, I guess, up and number of lines down. That is the relative line number. And term GUI colors will basically, I believe, turns on true color support and you need that for NVM Colorizer. So set clipboard plus equals unnamed plus will basically make it so when I copy stuff from NVM, it will actually just copy it to my standard clipboard so I can copy stuff out of NVIM, which is really useful and it's really annoying when it's not there. Auto completion, I can't exactly remember what that was for. So by default, the way that splits are handled is backwards. So I was gonna to try to describe this with words, but it's much easier to just describe it with just showing how splits work in my system. So if we open up a vertical split and we just open up a new version of the VimRC, so the new version is opened up on the right side. So instead of basically taking up the left side of the screen and moving the old one to the right side, it's instead just put onto the right side. So my old window doesn't actually get moved. So if we now remove that one and we open up a horizontal split, we'll do the same file. And with this one, we'll see that it's opened on the bottom. So what happens here is basically, instead of moving the old window down, it opens up the new window on the bottom. So my old window doesn't actually get moved. And I think that is just, I guess, a bit easier to follow, especially if you're working with a couple of different windows. I don't tend to use splits often, but when I do, it's much easier if it's set up like this. So now we're on to some of my Vim macros. So first one here is just enabling and disabling colorizing. Same with enabling, disabling uh, Goyo. I've got enabling and disabling comments as well because occasionally I will want comments to continue down the line. So if we got one here, so as you can see, when I press enter, it'll just keep the, uh, the comment line going. But if I was to press, is that, that the one? No, wrong one, it's the other one. We do that and then it's not going to actually continue that comment character. And then we've got my spell checking, so I can enable and disable spell checking. Vim actually does have a built-in spell checker if you didn't know about that. A lot of people don't actually realize that's there, but it actually is really nice. So we've got auto indenting for when I'm indented, when I'm doing say a case statement, for example, if I enable auto indent, it'll keep me at the same indentation level. Otherwise it'll bring me to the start of the line. So shell check, is a really useful program. Basically what that will do is it'll let you check if you're using any bashisms in your scripts and it'll tell you basically anything that's not going to be POSIX compliant. So next up we've got two interesting ones. So there was a time when I was going to be using Vim for programming a lot and what this was going to do was it lets me compile a file and then print the output. I still use it for things like when I'm working with PDFs because I'll tend to write them in Markdown or LaTeX and then I can compile them with Pandoc or whatever my LaTeX engine is and then I can display the output in Zathura for example. So here we've just got my split navigation because for some reason by default you have to like double press keys to go through splits and I just remove one of those key presses. So it's control W and then the direction for some reason. So I've just got that to control and then the direction as a Vim key. We've got keys for opening up splits. So if I do that and then say, I wanna open up another version of my VimRC, that'll then open a vertical split for that one. So if you've noticed that when I go into insert mode, it actually centers my screen. That is basically what this command down here is doing. So when I go into insert mode, it'll run ZZ and ZZ will, what that does is it just centers the screen. So if we press I now, we can see that line's now brought up to the center. So this right here will just make the search and replace command much easier to use because it's a bit of a handful to write without actually binding it to something. We've got keys in here to automatically save and quit just with key presses because I have some bad habits that I don't really want to get rid of. This one here will just remove some trailing white space on files so you don't end up having a bunch of empty lines at the bottom of your file that you don't need. So this next command in here probably should have been removed because there was a time when I was running a file where I was automatically generating CDs but basically now I never use that. I just jump to that file with LF and then open it up in a new, bump my mic, and then open it up in a new terminal if I need to. 
So I don't remember if this is the case anymore, but at least on Windows, for some reason .txt files, which are the files that you use for LaTeX, weren't actually being set to the text file type, so it was impossible to actually do any of the auto command text stuff with them. So if I'm rushing through some stuff, it's because I'm not going to go in depth on what I guess all of these settings do. I will come back to how to actually do Vim mappings and things like that in a later video. I just wanted to go over what is in my VimRC because if you do understand how a VimRC works, maybe there's something in here that you can get from it. Typically when I'm writing, I use things like guides. So basically, this is actually a really useful thing that I, I didn't come up with this, but I pinched it from Luke Smith. So basically what this does is, so I've got a key just to generate a guide. So if we do semicolon G, say I'm like up here and then we press space tab, I will then jump to the next guide. And I didn't realize there was actually a guide there. So if we come here, just chuck a bunch of empty lines in there. If I sp press space tab, that now just jumps to where the next guide is. And as that, it's not that useful, but I can then use that function to basically generate structures that you'd use in different languages and then jump around between them with guides. So we've got a bunch of ones for generating, say, functions, if statements, and case statements in shell scripts. Then we've got a bunch of HTML stuff so I can generate basically every single tag that I want to because there was a time when I was going to do some HTML in Vim. Didn't end up actually happening. I just went back to using VS Code because it's just much easier. But it is here if I need to use it. So say I want to generate an H1 tag. It will generate the H1 tag, put me into the center of it so I can just put some text in there and have a guide at the end. So I can write my stuff in there and then jump to where the guide is and then continue working. Same with things like my markdown stuff and my LaTeX stuff. So one of the problems with using Vim for programming is that you don't have a lot of the useful autofills that you would have by default. But because of things like Vim macros, you can actually go and write all of this stuff yourself. And there are plugins that do it for you, but if you're gonna write it by hand, it makes it, I guess, a lot more usable for you because instead of having to learn someone else's perfect configuration, you can build up your own perfect configuration to make it work exactly the way that you want to work. Always make sure that OBS is detecting your microphone because otherwise you're gonna to have to re-record stuff. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos from this channel, then Remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get updates. But as always, YouTube can never actually be trusted to push updates to anyone. So also go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. So hopefully I don't seem too tired because uni is really starting to grind on me right now. And I hope it doesn't come out in the videos because I do want these to actually be good. So up on that corner, I will put a playlist that I'll have random other Linux videos in. It'll probably be my Linux rising playlist. I'll decide when I actually go and upload this one. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and... I'm out.